Hey guys, back with another educational video. And this week we're talking about how many carbs do you need to build muscle? Now, I got this idea from watching the Game Changers. Now, I had to sit through 90 minutes of pure, of just hell of watching that steaming pile of shit. But it did give me a good idea. I wanted to really kind of look into this because it's something I get asked a lot and that is, do you need carbs to build muscle? Let's take a look at what that actually means. So first off, need is kind of the wrong word. People ask me this all the time. How much do I need of something? Now that shouldn't be the question. If you're wanting to build muscle, the question should be what is optimal? You kind of have two different camps on this. You have people saying you don't need carbs to build muscle. You know, you can just hammer away a bunch of protein and fat and you know, the ketogenic diet camp would say, well, ketones are, are protein sparing, so do that. And then you've got people in these other camps, you know, like kind of the, the vegan camp, who will say, you don't need that much protein to build muscle. What you need is a lot of carbs. Um, carbs increase insulin. Insulin is anabolic. In fact, you know, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, they were telling everybody to have 100 grams of dextrose with their post-workout shake because it was going to spike insulin and increase muscle protein anabolism. Part of the research I did in grad school was actually on this topic. Insulin in the physiological range, meaning the amount of insulin secretion you can get from consuming a high carbohydrate meal, does not seem to be anabolic in terms of muscle protein synthesis. It does seem to have an effect on decreasing muscle protein breakdown, however. So basically, your net protein balance, or how much muscle you can build, is the rate of synthesis minus the rate of degradation. So it does seem like insulin may have an input by decreasing protein degradation, but it doesn't increase uh, muscle protein synthesis. But we know that if we give protein uh, after a workout or protein plus carbs, we don't see an increase further in muscle protein synthesis. Now, if you take somebody who's a type one diabetic, they don't produce any insulin, they have a lower rate of muscle protein synthesis. So it does look like a kind of permissive amount of insulin is required to increase muscle protein synthesis. And if you're deficient in it, um, you, you will have lower rates of muscle protein synthesis. But you know, if, if you're getting even a like small to moderate amount of carbohydrate in your diet, it seems that it'll have enough to give that permissive effect. There have been some studies comparing ketogenic diets versus non-ketogenic diets on muscle building. They actually referenced one of them in the Game Changers, but they kind of, of course, spun it to fit their agenda. Both groups were eating a high protein diet. Both groups were eating uh, two grams per kg of protein. Both were resistance training. And they looked at how much muscle they built either on a kind of balanced diet with high protein or on a ketogenic diet with high protein. What they found was that the high protein non-ketogenic group built a significantly greater amount of lean body mass during that time. Now this could be for a few reasons. Again, low ins lower insulin on the ketogenic diet, so you're having maybe greater rates of protein breakdown possibly. Also, perhaps being having more carbohydrate for fuel during training helped those people train harder, maybe created a little bit more muscle growth from training. That's also possible. But it was also a free living study, so they did take people who were familiar with tracking their intakes. So it should have been pretty representative of what they were eating, but there's always the possibility that the ketogenic diet group was eating a little bit lower calorie than the non-ketogenic diet group because uh, they just, they were maybe more satiated. On that note, a lot of people say that the ketogenic diet is way more satisfying. You know, you have way less hunger and that's why it's so great. Because if you aren't hungry, you're not going to overeat and you can stay on the diet. So maybe, maybe for muscle building, having more carbs is better. Maybe for fat loss, having less carbs is better. But if we look at adherence rates and dropout rates in diet studies looking at ketogenic versus non-ketogenic dieting, what we see is the dropout rates are, are basically identical. There's no difference. So if the ketogenic diet does have an impact on hunger, it's not enough to stop people from falling off the wagon, so to speak. Now, that being said, if you like a ketogenic diet and you feel less hungry on it and you feel more satisfied, hey, go for it. But at least for muscle building, while in a caloric surplus, it may not be optimal. All right, guys, 
If you enjoyed this video, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and click the links in the description to check out some of our books and other products that we offer. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you like these videos, please click the links in the description to check out some of my educational books where you can learn more about fat loss and contest prep.